You know what's kind of freaky? The fact that the old adage, you are what you eat, not only holds water, but it's literally true at every cellular, metabolic, and biochemical level throughout our body. Which brings me to my next point. Tony the Tiger is a fraud <gasps> and has been lying about his exclusive frosted flake only diet for the last 40 years. Yeah, bigger scandal than Liver King if you ask me. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftinbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are discussing the quick, simple, and tasty solution to all of our problems, and specifically highlighting how it, ironically, leads to many more problems. Internal vibe-killing problems. We're talking ultra-processed foods and their likely impact on our health. Because when it comes to health modulating variables, this class of food may be more prevalent and relevant than anything else, often making up over 50% of the energy in the modern day diet, designating them as a bigger threat than the C word we mustn't say. Huh, what, what was that? Production team, guard the doors. So we'll touch first on the sticky problems these ultra processed foods bring to the cellular and metabolic table, then dive into some new data highlighting its association with one of the most prevalent and flat out scariest diseases we intelligent walking apes face, cancer, and finally finish up with strategies and resources to help mitigate your risk. Because we all know, once you're in those colorful aisles and God forbid hungry, willpower can disappear just as fast as Dory's memory. Precisely why we're gonna talk about some ways to just keep swimming. But that's a little later. First, the problems with ultra processed foods. And what exactly are they? Well, these are considered foods and food items, which have been heavily processed during their production. Drastically, this is the key, altering them from their natural form. Think soft drinks, industrial processed breads, sweet and savory packaged snacks, breakfast cereals, reconstituted meat products, and a lot of those ready to eat slash heat meals. You know, many of those attention grabbing, mouth watering, cartoon or catchy jingle associating options that now make up the majority of the modern day grocery store. Now, wanna make an important call out here. Not all processed foods are evil. In fact, most foods have been altered from their original form to make them more consumable to us humans. This goes for things such as high quality meats, wild fish, organic produce, grains, oils, and seasonings. It is the amount of processing and additives that give the ultra processed foods their ultra delineation. So with that little background, let's explore some of the ways these foods can increase our odds, likelihood, and probability of having problems within our biological business. Starting off with the fact that they often come with the suboptimal combo of being energy dense and nutrient scarce. Because many of these foods have been produced with the intention of tickling your taste buds and dripping your dopamine, not nourishing you. And to accomplish this, they are not only loaded with sweetness stimulators such as sucrose, fructose, and glucose, but also the savory wonders of fat, many times included as highly refined oils. All this gives your brain the sensation and experience of a combo which is not naturally found in nature. And since we're programmed as survival machines, experiencing long periods of energy scarcity throughout our evolution, we're likely going to reinforce and reward something that comes with two vital macronutrients in it. Because for 99% of primate evolution, more fat meant higher rates of survival. Combining that with the fact that this intense processing strips out more vital nutrients such as vitamins, minerals, and fiber, leaving you with an artificially colored and flavored Twinkie-like concoction, the protective properties of those original foods are all but gone. Now, I know what you're thinking. How bad could a snack or two be? I mean, come on, you gotta live, right? And in reality, that's likely true. 
it's highly unlikely that the occasional snack will lead to your cellular and metabolic demise. However, these foods often elicit a open door policy when it comes to portion control. Why is this? Well, again, likely because of the nutrient depletion which accompanies the processing, making the ultra processed food so damn tasty yet unsatiating that you just gotta have one more or the whole box. This, in combination with the nice three second squirts of dopamine, often leads one down the path of overeating, increasing not only total energy consumption, but metabolic stress within. And here's how. Because these foods are typically not in their original forms, lacking the structure and complex fibers which accompany real whole foods, they tend to get absorbed extremely quickly, driving an influx of glucose, fructose, and who knows what additives into digestion and circulation, which ultimately stress tests our organs. And when the siege is ongoing, think years, it leads to fat buildup both on and around our organs, cellular fatigue and dysfunction as with the insulin producing beta cells of the pancreas, and inflammation, the chronic type, setting the stage for dysfunction of those very organs over time, and directly affecting key health biomarkers such as blood sugar, cholesterol levels, and blood pressure. And when we incorporate the science displaying how we are pre-programmed to store more fat under these high sugar conditions, as we discussed here, the Keebler elves quickly turn from friend to foe. Oh, and that's just from the ingredients that we know and are most accustomed to in these foods. They're also riddled with additives, sweeteners, emulsifiers, preservatives, and colorants to which we have no clue of their real effects throughout the body. And double O, we can't forget packaging too, as certain materials have been implicated in exhibiting carcinogenic and endocrine disrupting properties. Microwave popcorn much? Now, you may be asking, why all this extracurricular activity with the processing? Two words, optimize health. No, I'm just kidding. The real two words are shelf life, shelf life, shelf life. This shelf life not only increases their longevity at the food store, but also makes them cheap, many times cheaper and more convenient than their real whole food counterparts, which will actually decay and rot, ultimately adding to their appeal and unfairly making them much more prevalent in low socioeconomic environments. And when this ultra processed eating not only becomes a societal norm, but a full waking day or night ordeal, as mentioned, it sets the stage for our cellular machinery to become dysfunctional with widespread impacts from the populations of microorganisms in the gut, swaying suboptimal communities to form, promoting the slow breakdown of the gut wall and a future inflammatory firefight to straight up hindering cellular respiration by driving mitochondria damage and dysfunction, impacting the core of all things life or energy production. This impact can even reach on up into our cranial cabinets, influencing the strength and permeability of our super protective blood brain barrier or wall guarding the entrance into our five pound mushy membrane, making it leaky and more permeable, thus impacting our short-term neuronal function and potential risk for degeneration over time. All of this has established the association between excess ultra processed foods and the odds, likelihood, and probability of disease. One of the most notable ones being non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD, which is a condition where diet leads to excess fat buildup on the liver, impairing its cellular function and the many metabolic and detoxifying functions it performs for the rest of the body. A condition which has suspiciously rose with the prevalence of these mouth-watering foods. Huh, you don't say. But what do we know about its influence on a condition which has recently surpassed cardiovascular disease as the leading cause of premature death in many Western countries? A condition in which it's estimated at least 50% of cases could potentially be prevented. Cancer. Let's swim on into this new data. 
researchers from London's Imperial School of Public Health sought to see if there was a significant association between the consumption of ultra-processed foods and the risk of developing cancers. To do this, they tapped into the UK Biobank records to analyze the diet information and health outcomes of nearly 200,000 middle-aged adults who were followed for a 10-year time span, specifically looking into the observational impact of ultra-processed foods on three main outcomes. The risk of developing any type of cancer, the specific risk of developing one of 34 different types of cancers, and finally, the overall risk of dying from cancer. And to no shocking surprise, the study found that higher consumption of ultra-processed foods was associated with a greater overall risk of developing cancer, specifically ovarian and brain cancers. It was also associated with a greater overall risk of dying from cancer, most notably from ovarian and breast cancers. Huh, but how big a risk are we talking? Well, when compared to the lowest ultra-processed food consumers, the highest had a 7% overall increased risk of developing cancer with a 25% increased risk of lung cancer, 52% increased risk of brain cancer, and 65% increased risk in developing B cell lymphoma, with women seeing a higher uptick in breast and ovarian cancers, and men seeing a higher uptick in prostate. Other common cancers such as gastrointestinal and colon cancer also stuck out as being more prevalent. And get this, the researchers found for every 10% increase of ultra-processed foods in the diet, there was a 2% overall increase in developing some form of cancer and a 6% increased risk of mortality from cancer. Damn, not great numbers. Now, it's important to note, this study was observational in nature and thus cannot establish a causal link between ultra-processed foods and cancer for that reason. But as we know, information is power and food is power too. So let's explore some ways to use both to our advantage. And to do this, we return to our old adage, you are what you eat. And remind each other, it's not just an adage, it's literally true. As the foods you eat on a daily basis not only become the building blocks of the very cells that make up your holistic self as you know it, but also create the hormones, peptides, proteins, enzymes, and neurotransmitters which are necessary for those cells to operate efficiently. Making high quality eating quite literally one of the best things anyone can do. Not only to support optimal organ function and delay the cellular aging process, but to make you feel effing awesome on a daily basis. You are what you eat, full stop. So keep that in mind when you're making your choices. And a great place to start as with any desired improvements is with the baseline of your current habits. Observe yourself. Are you focusing on real, whole, high-quality foods? Pasture-raised, organic, wild, and fed natural diets? Foods that our biology has evolved millions of years accustomed to? Or are you consuming large amounts of high-fat, high-sugar, additive-riddled, emulsifier, and colorant-rich processed foods? Foods that have just gone mainstream over the last 50 years or so. Are you consuming foods in their natural forms with all the vitamins, minerals, fiber, and macronutrients intact? Or are you eating foods that could last on the shelves for years? Do you spend a lot of your time in the middle aisles of the grocery store? Are you somewhat dependent or addicted to particular treats? Are the processed foods you are consuming simple? Five ingredients or less. Can you pronounce and understand all of the ingredients on the label? These are some of the questions that will help baseline your current habits. And if you find yourself a little further in the ultra processed category than you'd like, you can begin a slow and sustainable healthy swap strategy, essentially identifying healthy alternative for those ultra processed foods you're somewhat dependent on with a focus around adding the real while slowly phasing out the ultra processed, giving your palate time to adjust and get reacclimated with this real type of eating, a process which typically happens over the course of a few weeks to months. Remember, Sustainable change takes time, 
but it also increases your probability of success. And as your cellular and metabolic state rediscovers its efficient operations, it will manifest as a happier, more energized, better sleeping, clearer thinking you, decreasing your odds, likelihood, and probability of disease in the process. Pretty good deal if you ask me. That's why focusing on real whole nourishing foods is one of the best investments that you can make not only in the short term, but the long term too. Also, the reason why we have the fully loaded How to Eat playlist, breaking down the latest interesting research, nutrition science, and eating strategies. This Know Your Food video is a great place to start. Listen, there's no better day to take that first step to a more efficient cellular and metabolic you. Remember, one decision or treat can never define you. You're defined by your decisions over time. And keep in mind, all sustainable change doesn't happen overnight. It happens over many nights. So build the routines that nurture consistency. And when those temptations arise, remember, just keep swimming.